Hey, hello. Uh, just checking the audio is working. Um, we're just waiting a couple more minutes for some people to join and then we'll start. Working? Yeah. Cool. Okay. Yeah, there'll be a little delay. Okay, let's get started. Um, no, I don't want to delete that. All right. Okay, can you see the next slide? Okay, so um, uh, this is a presentation uh, made after a few friends asked me if I would like to present about mountaineering and free ride in Georgia because it's a beautiful and interesting place and yeah some people from some outdoor clubs in Melbourne who were friends with me um, asked me if I'd like to talk about it and I thought uh, why not invite some friends to talk about it from who also live here in Georgia uh, so a bit of background about myself I'm originally from Melbourne but I've been living on and off in Georgia for about two years now um, and uh, I love the place and so I thought I'd share some love about Georgia and adventures here. So these are the people who are going to be presenting today. Uh, we have Kato who's from Georgia and we have Arena who's from the US and Taylor from the US and myself. I met all these guys, uh, I originally met Taylor here um, while I was on an avalanche course about four years ago, three or four years ago, and um, Kato and Arena, I met um, in Gudauri during uh, the lockdown in 2020. Uh, we were all living up in Gudauri at this point, and we spent our days just ski touring in a dead ski resort. So, where is Georgia? Um, Georgia is right on the eastern edge of uh, Europe and it's nestled in between uh, several countries and on the west side we have the Black Sea and on the east side it's a uh, landlocked between Russia, Azerbaijan, Armenia and to the south we have Turkey. Um, so who are the Georgian people? Uh, here's a photo I took of a, a group in Svaneti, um, some locals having a great time. So yeah, the, the younger people, like in this photo, they, uh, they tend to speak English fairly well, um, and the older people, they speak Russian, and everyone here speaks Georgian. Um, so th those are the main three languages that get used in Georgia. and. In terms of uh, what Georgian people are like, I definitely find that when you're traveling in Georgia, um, Georgian people are not tend not to be paranoid about foreigners. They they're not afraid of you, and um, they like to in, invite you into their house, and they're very generous. Um, in terms of outdoor culture it, among Georgian people, um, the 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 outdoor is not so popular in Georgia, partly because it's uh, it's expensive um, f to get the equipment, but um, it's becoming more popular and it's really cool to see and encourage more Georgians to, to get out there into the mountains. Um, and But but there is a long history of climbing, especially in Svaneti, it's very evident um, that there's a long history of climbing and there's a climbing museum there. Um, <coughs> And another thing I notice about Georgian people is that there's not so much red tape about where you can and can't go. P people aren't quite so possessive over uh, the, the borders of their land. And um, so when you're on a ski tour, you're not so worried about running into some 
private property where you'll get in trouble. Um, yeah, it, it's, it's nice like that. And people seem to take more responsibility for their actions when they're out uh, skiing or in the ski resort. It seems to be that, uh, that there's a bit less of a blame culture. Um, and uh, yeah, people take responsibility for, their, for themselves and their own risks. That's just my observations. Um, here's some photos a friend of mine took um, while he while he was living in the Racha area of Georgia. A bit more on that later. So, um, what are the Georgian mountains like? The Georgia has a very surprising amount of different climate zones. Um, on the north edge of Georgia we have the, the Greater Caucasus Ranges which range up to mountains um, over 5,000 meters. Um, the highest mountains in Europe are in this area. And f a bit further to the south we have the Lesser Caucasus. So um, Taylor a bit later is going to be talking about uh, the area near Batumi on the southwest side, the lower Caucasus, and uh, Arena is going to be talking about uh, the Gudaudi area, which is the biggest ski resort area in Georgia. Um, and Kato is going to be talking about the uh, Semeneti and Racha area. So, uh, Kato, it's here, you're up. <coughs> Okay, so I will be talking about two trips basically. Uh, one is mountaineering in Swaneti, uh, where this photo is from, and uh, one trip in Raja, ski touring trip. So uh, in Swaneti, uh, there's a village, uh, Ushkuli, uh, which is the highest village in uh, Europe actually, and from there you can go walk like 10 kilometers and there's a nice camp where you can um, sleep in the tents and go over, I don't know, many roads uh, from 1 to 8 to 5 difficulty. These are some photos which I took there. Um, yeah, This is taken in autumn so uh, the weather is mostly rainy but in August there's a super nice weather where you can go there. This is already Raja. Uh, this is the group uh, we went together for two nights near Shoda Valley. Um, there you can go up uh, next to the forest, camp there, and then go on very steep parts to ski down and the snow quality is super nice there. You can sleep in the tent or snow hole <laughs> like an igloo. Uh, there you can see our camp. And this is the like 45 degrees steepness where we couldn't skin up so we have to walk yeah and there's a bunch of places in Raja where uh, you can camp and go on uh, little tours from there very practical and this is already Ajara okay Kamar Joba, everybody. I'm Taylor. Um, so I'll first introduce myself a little bit. I've been in Georgia for six ski seasons now. <clears throat> um, and I'm running a ski school and ski adventure company based in Gudauri in the winter, doing some tours around Georgia and free ride trips. Uh, and I've done a lot of traveling around Georgia for myself and with friends just to explore the area. And my favorite region of Georgia is Ajara. It's in the southwest part of the country. And I especially like it because it has every different climate within this one region. Um, 
Down in Batumi, in the main city, there's a subtropical climate. Uh, it's really nice to go to the beach in the summer and in the fall. And just uphill a little bit from Batumi, it's temperate rainforests where it's just very lush and kind of jungle feeling. And then when you go up higher, you get into the alpine zone, like in this picture here, which is taken from near Goderdzi Pass. Um, and the elevation in this region goes up to about 2,800 meters at the highest point. So you have plenty of alpine terrain up there. And um, it's, it's a really cool place. It gets a lot of the moisture coming off of the Black Sea. So it has the deepest snowpack in all of Georgia and pretty consistently good powder throughout the season. Um, it does have a bit of a shorter season than the higher regions, but if you come at the right time, like January or February, it can be really, really amazing. Uh, and another cool thing about Ajar is that it has a unique culture and slightly different food. Um, and the, the people there have been pretty isolated for a long time until just recently as more roads are being built. So they have some of their own traditions. Uh, a lot of the region is Muslim, so you can hear the call to prayer when you're skiing. And there are a lot of these little villages, like in this picture, um, with summer huts that people come up there in summer with their cows and sheep and families and live there for the whole summer. And then it's totally abandoned in winter and it makes a really cool place to ski through, uh, just going between all these abandoned ancient wooden huts. Um, so here's a picture from uh, ski touring near Goderdzi. Goderdzi is the only ski resort in Ajara, and it's pretty small. It has two gondolas, and the the resort itself is not particularly interesting for free riding or for backcountry skiing. But it's a really cool place, just a local vibe. Like lots of people come up from Batumi on the weekends, skiing in their jeans and leather jackets, and the food is incredible. And there's there's a lot of fun parties there, and. Uh, so it's a very unique ski experience at the resort because it's nothing like any of the other bigger international resorts. Uh, and then near there, there's a lot of really cool backcountry and really nice forest skiing. So like you can see in this picture, it was just dumping snow on that day and the trees are really nicely spaced. So it's just perfect place to ski in the forest. Um, here's another picture. That's me near a couple of huts. The huts get almost buried in the snow in the winter. These are two stories, but the first floor is pretty much buried. And and yeah, it's, it's uh, super cool. It feels like you're just in a, you're very remote because you have to drive up this long, long dirt road to get there and then either hike or hire a snow cat to take you up the mountain. And then you're skiing through this totally empty village. Um, it's a really unique experience. And so here's a picture of a group of us who went cat skiing. And that's also part of what I'm doing with my company is organizing cat skiing trips to Guderzi, which is really one of my favorite things to do in Georgia. Um, because you can basically point at any mountain around the area and say, I want to go there. And the snow cat driver will take you up there. And it's quite affordable compared to the rest of the world. And it's very much just, there's no red tape. You can really just go anywhere. And like, if there's no cat track or no road already, it may take a little bit longer, but they'll make you one. And, uh, and this cat, you can see it doesn't have a cabin on the back. It's open air, which, is a little bit more adventurous and it's pretty fun. You can hang on the back of it just holding onto the railing. And uh, we managed to fit this whole group on the back pretty comfortably. And uh, another really nice thing about Ajara is that once you're done skiing, you can go back down to the sea and take a swim in the ocean. So next up, good dowry. <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm Arena. I am a ski instructor with Vagabond, um, the company that Taylor owns and founded. I'm also helping Taylor. We are co-guiding and coordinating trips to 
Gudauri and to the Adara region, so a mixture of free riding and cat skiing. And so here we have um, the back side of Gudauri. This is some of the um, free riding terrain outside of the resort. And that's one of the really incredible things about this resort is that there's so much beautiful terrain connected to the resort that's accessible from the lifts. Um, so you can find some really, really incredible, rather consequential terrain um, with easy access. So it's the largest, Gudauri is the largest and oldest ski resort, and it has about 11 chairlifts and gondolas, a couple of gondolas included in there, plus a couple rope toes, and it's a large, large resort. It stretches about 1,300 vertical meters from the bottom of the first lift to the top of the biggest lift, and it tops out at about 3,300 meters. And it's very conveniently located. It's actually quite not so far from Tbilisi. It's about two and a half hours north, um, and it's pretty easy to get there. It's kind of exciting to get there. You go on this very winding road. You can kind of see it in this photo in the bottom corner um, that winds through some really big mountains. Um, and it's pretty easy. It takes, yeah, a couple hours. It's only about eight lari, which um, translates to about three and a half Australian dollars. Um, so you can hop on in the morning and get there by first chair pretty much um, and along the way you can see some of our favorite ski touring spots like this one is Lomisa Monastery uh, which is an old monastery that's you know it's a great spot to stop after a pretty um, strenuous ascent up the um, face um, and a really nice place to stop for tea and meet with the local monks who might invite you um, for tea and candies, but also maybe for a ceremony uh, where they put this chain around you with a lock on it. And if you go around the monastery three times, they um, grant you, you know, any any wish. <laughs> um, and so <laughs> then as you make your way up the road, you'll finally get to Gudauri um, if you aren't stopped by some cattle passing in the road or sheep or something like that. Georgia is always full of surprises like that, so you have to make plans, but keep your plans, um, your commitment to your plans a bit lightly because things are always coming at you fast. Um, but that's also part of what we love about Georgia is that it's always full of surprises. This is one of my favorite um, runs shown here on a particularly nice powder day. Um, as you can see, there's a lot of you know rocks, a lot of features, but also just a nice sustained um, slope for great powder turns. You can see some nice face shots in here. Um, a, a pass costs about um, a day pass costs about twenty to twenty five Australian dollars for the day. So it's really I I'm coming from America, and my God, this is so much more affordable compared to the day passes there. So you really get a lot of value out of that day pass. Um, and I think the the other part of what makes this place so amazing, because you see it's incredible mountains, incredible terrain. But there's a lot of incredible mountains and a lot of incredible terrain in the world. And I think what makes Gudauri really special is that it's there's a really strong international community. There's a really strong representation of you know young Georgians here um, who are starting businesses and also international um, folks who are coming. So here in this photo you can see two Americans, um, a Slovak, a German, and a guy from the UK and we've had um, we've met people from all over the world here. And I think they keep coming back because again Georgia is full of surprises whether it's um, new mountains or new connections to new people or having dogs follow you up the slopes and follow you down. It's just something new every day. And this is um, coming off of the resort, looking in the direction of some of our, the less consequential terrain. Mount uh, Trudeli is the mountain. It's one of our local favorites. It's like where we like to ski out the backyard and perfect for sunset laps. So Simon here is about to ski down this pillow field um, to get to the base of Trudeli before hiking up and then skiing. Um, and here's a, one of my favorite photos of sunset time, um, perfect place for sunset laps. Just make sure to bring your headlamp and a buddy so that you can 
hopefully make it home in one piece. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Cool. Thanks, Irina. I love Godori too. It's a it's a very interesting place. So um, I'm going to talk a little bit about some mountaineering in Georgia during the summer. So uh, this is a trip I went on with my friend Ryan, um, and it's to Chauhi, which is just a little bit further north from Godori, um, and it's uh, some of the best trad climbing in. Um, in Georgia and the rock quality is pretty nice and uh, but you've definitely got to do a bit of hiking to get to the base of the climb um, so yeah this is one of the easier routes on Chalki uh, I'd say it's like about grade 17 16 something like that in Australia um, and yeah we, we got caught out in a store a bit of an unexpected storm on the way down which was interesting it even snowed it was the middle of summer so yeah, be ready for anything in the mountains of Georgia. Um, this is another trip we went on to uh, to Tetnuli, which is in the Svaneti region of Georgia, um, uh, very close to a well-known uh, historic town called Mestia. You can you can see Tetnul the top of Tetnuli from Mestia. It's a beautiful white mountain that everyone looks at from the town. And yes, yeah, so. To do to climb to Tetnuri, you you have to do at least uh, one camp acclimatizing. And on this trip, we did um, two camps. We went up to a lower camp, and then this is us walking up to the higher camp up on the glacier. Um, so here is the face of Tetnuri. So on this trip, we we climbed the the west face of Tetnuri here. Um, so it's kind of from the bottom right up through the middle. Um, between some rocks and straight up the face. So it was actually our second attempt on this. Uh, the first time we kind of weren't really ready for it. It was like completely icy, just bulletproof ice. Um, and it's a pretty long route. It's like eight, 700 meters from from the bottom to the top of uh, the face. So uh, it's 700 meters of ice climbing, we weren't ready. But this this year we, we were ready for that. And um, yeah, we gave it a go. So this is us uh, camping and, and waiting for to acclimatize and be ready. The top of Tetnaudi is about 4,300 meters. Um, uh, this is some bad weather, uh, uh, some grapple um, waterfalls that we observed while we're up there. And for, from Tetnaudi, you can see Elbrus, uh, which is the highest mountain in Europe. Um, it's just this uh, rocky ridge in the foreground is uh, the border with Russia, and, and just over the other side is um, Elbrus. Um, so you can see here, uh, sometimes during the summer, it's pretty popular. Um, this is a couple of groups being guided by some Georgian mountain guides. Um, and yeah, some of these guys are fantastic guides and uh, can highly recommend going on a trip with them. Um, they're very friendly. so. Uh, yeah, we were quite thankful to them to have made a, tra uh, a track uh, on the easy route so that these guys were ascending Tetnaudi along the ridge. Um, so yeah, we got to enjoy their track on the way down. And on the right hand side photo is uh, Ushba, which is probably one of the most famous mountain climbing mountains in Georgia. Um, there's quite a few difficult routes and yeah, it's uh, it's definitely if you're really into your mountain climbing Ushba is a place that's worth visiting it's definitely on my bucket list I think we'll try that one next um, yeah this is uh, Ryan uh, we're climbing up the face here and actually in this photo it's probably hard to see but on the right hand side there's two little specks of people descending um, yeah climbing up the face pretty icy good protection the whole way but it made it a bit slow we were hoping for some snow um, and yeah we got to the top at about sunset and in the end we made it back to our tent uh, at about 2 a.m. in the morning <laughs> so it was a 24-hour climb so actually how do you, uh, in terms of organizing your own trips in Georgia um, uh, most of us like to use this uh, map website called Mappy cz which is a Czech um, website and the cool thing about Mappy is that it has a, 
an outdoor mode with um, topographical lines and also more importantly it has the Georgian and the transliterated word in the English letters so that you can understand the places that you're going to and the signs that you see on the road and map it back to the map so it's really helpful um, it also has a winter mode which is cool when you're around Godaudi it shows some of the ski runs and where the ski lifts go um, and it's even got uh, this slope inclination mode which it's not super accurate but it's cool to get an idea about which areas are steep and which are less steep um, in terms of avalanche conditions there are no avalanche forecast provided by any group in Georgia um, but there is a Facebook group you can join where people share their observations and if you have some uh, knowledge about uh, um, avalanche conditions you, you can use this knowledge to sort of uh, create your own forecast from what you're seeing and what other people are observing. Um, so that's the best you'll get in Georgia, I think. But um, yeah, we, we make do with what we've got, the limited resources, and try to be conservative. Uh, yeah, but it's sometimes difficult because the terrain is so impressive and so, uh, so risky sometimes. So yeah, Georgia's, Georgia's not the safest place to go skiing, I would say, but um, it's certainly interesting. Um, in terms of rock climbing, uh, during the summer, like uh, there are a whole bunch of activities, so rock climbing, canyoning, um, and, and during the winter, there's also a bunch of ice climbing as well. So Guga, um, who's bolted most of the sport climbing routes here in Georgia, um, he has a great website called Climbing in Georgia, which has some topos for climbs, and um, yeah, he's definitely a good person to talk to about rock climbing in Georgia. Um, that's the end of the presentation, I think. Um, do, does anyone have any questions? Uh, let's. Well, I can leave it on a photo. Yeah, you can just uh, you can write in the chat. Um, YouTube has a chat, or I can also answer questions if the if it's on the Facebook page. Oh, Taylor, do you want to answer that question? What's what's the situation with gear rental for touring from Finn? I can, yeah, I can jump in and and answer this. Um, <clears throat> There are a couple of rental shops that have touring gear. None of them are very big, so if you have a group of more than a couple people, then you'll definitely need to organize that in advance and maybe gather stuff from a couple different places. Um, <clears throat> but in general, you can rent touring skis, skins, boots, uh, avalanche safety gear, and everything. And in Tbilisi, there's one shop called M Plus, which has everything for rent. Um, and also up in Gudauri, there are a couple of shops with rental gear. Um, Buru Sport has some ski touring gear. Also, there's a rental shop in the Gudauri Hut Hotel that has ski touring gear. Um, so yeah, there are a couple of options and you can rent pretty much everything. You just don't have a very big selection about which touring skis to choose from. Um, so if you have any of your own gear, I would especially recommend bringing your own boots if you have them. And if not, it's totally doable. It's just not a huge selection. Um, and Luke can answer the next question. What are the bad bits? <laughs> What are the bad bits about Georgia? <laughs> uh, well, um, sometimes it's not super comfortable. I mean, let's take ski resorts, for instance. Um, uh, I know 
um, some of the ski resorts, they don't have as much um, uh, avalanche control as you would expect in some other countries just because they don't have the resources. Um, but for me, actually, that's not too bad because I kind of am used to taking responsibility for where I'm skiing and what I'm doing. Um, but I know that for some people that will be a bit intimidating and m maybe a bit of a put-off. Um, what kind of winter temperatures are you experiencing up high? So up uh, above 3,000 meters, what would you say the temperature would be like below minus 20 sometimes? Mm -hmm. um, well, yeah. In Russia it was maximum minus 20. Okay, yeah. It was so average uh, 15, minus 15. Okay. In the night. Kato says the average minus 15 during the night in Racha. Um, and the area, how high was where we were in Racha? We it were. Was less than, it was yeah, 2, we were camping at 2,000 or so. Yeah. 2,000 so, meters. Yeah, I would say. Um, am I in the camera now? Probably. <laughs> it's <a, laughs> delayed. I would say that in general, temperatures. In midwinter, like January, February, can be it can even get down to minus fifteen during the day on the really coldest days, um, and it can definitely be minus twenty, minus twenty five at night on the coldest nights. But it's not usually that cold. Uh, most of the time, you're gonna find temperatures of like minus fifteen at night in midwinter, and then as you get further into spring in March and April, it gets gradually warmer and warmer, uh, and at that point you'll find at 2,000 meters will be just around freezing and up at 3,000 meters maybe you'll get down to minus 10 or so in the spring. How about language? Access. Oh, okay. Yeah, language? Do you want to talk about that, Kato? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, about the language, uh, I think Luke already said that um, younger people uh, tend to speak English, not everybody, but mostly they do. And in older generations, everyone knows Russian. Uh, about Georgian language, it's super different from any other languages. So maybe if you know Arabic, then you can understand some stuff. But other than that, the writing is different. It sounds differently. For for example, hello is Kamar Joba. So, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. the next, uh, I can jump in and answer the next questions. Um, so, next question, access to fuel for stoves. Uh, you can buy the regular isobutane canisters. They're readily available in Tbilisi. There's several shops that sell them. Um, and you can also get them in Stepansminda, which is the main town in Kazbegi region, and in Mestia and Kutaisi. Uh, so they're not too hard to find, but you do just have to prepare a little bit in advance because in most mountain villages you can't find them. Um, and the quality of snow in December. Oh, oh, yeah, one something. additional thing about the fuel: if you've got a um, like a, a whisper light or something, and you want um, to get the the uh, what is it that they burn? I forget. Um, but in in Georgia, it's uh, in Russia and Georgia. I think it tends to go by benzene galosha, which you can get from the hardware store. Um, so yeah, it's not too difficult to find. Um, about the quality of snow in December. December is not the best month to come here for a ski trip because um, Georgia typically has a pretty dry fall and a pretty wet spring. So December it can be good in some years but it's not reliably good. Uh, I would highly recommend, especially if you're coming here for touring, spring is much better. So March and April are really the best months of the season for touring and for resort skiing, I'd say January till April is quite good. Um, December, it's just a bit hit or miss. Do you want to talk about the dog every night? Is there a question about the dogs? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is something I can um, it'll, How far into the mountains do the dogs come to this? <laughs> oh my gosh. All right. Um, <laughs> 
do they just come? You can read the, read the question. Oh, mm -hmm. thank you. Um, yeah, they go pretty far back there. Actually, Luke <laughs> and I were on a ski tour last year really far back there and we were impressed how far the dog <laughs> hiked with us and did pretty well like you know it's pretty challenging to have your little paws probably Sometimes in the snow like for some. Yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah. Kato is saying <laughs> that um, sometimes dogs will come to the top of a 5,000 meter peak so they're quite intrepid and <laughs> they really do uh, latch on to you so it's really really enjoyable <laughs> and they're friendly <laughs> and they're friendly they're very friendly sometimes there's dynamics between them especially if there's like a group of 10 of them in the city square but um they're usually quite nice take a take a snack for the, for the dogs yeah take a snack for the dogs <laughs> what else do we have what kind of qualifications do you need to become a ski guide in georgia do you want to talk about that one yeah i can i can answer that Okay, to be honest, um, no one is really controlling it, so you can basically go to Gudauri, learn how to ski there, and start teaching beginners if you have some connections. But uh, we have training courses for instructors, and um, most instructors, like actually everyone, like I know, have certificates for that. It's pretty easy to uh, take a certain certificate, but you have to be Georgian. Other than that, yeah, you can just with connections. Yeah. There's also the Georgian Mountain Guide Association too. Yeah. Which has some ski guiding qualifications. Um, yeah, the, the Georgian Mountain Guiding Association is now accepted by the IFMGA. Yeah, that's what. Oh, they're a candidate, I think. Yeah, so they're, they're uh, predictable years. The Georgian Mountain Guiding Association are a candidate for IFMGA, so they're currently being assessed. So, th yeah, there's a bunch of uh, Georgian ski guides um, operating here in Georgia. Um, and hopefully soon they'll be part of IFMGA. Which, for people who don't know what that stands for, is the International Federation of Mountain Guides. So, some other member countries like Canada, US, uh, Europe. Um, uh, how predictable and or reliable is the weather slash storm forecasting? Um, the weather forecasting here in Georgia is a bit hit and miss because um, the weather models in Georgia are not super well calibrated for uh, for these mountains and there's also not that many um, weather observation stations here in Georgia for them to actually be able to accurately calibrate them so you really have to look at the weather forecasts that you're seeing a, a lot of us like to use windy um, you really have to look at them and um, give them a, a bit of a bit of extra leeway than you normally would for somewhere like Australia or New Zealand um, yeah um, do the dogs belong to anyone? Uh, <laughs> I am the dog expert. Yeah, Arena's the dog expert. She's going to talk about that. You can talk about their tags, actually. No. Okay, dog expert here. Um, no, the dogs are not usually owned by anyone. Um, they are um, often vaccinated and spayed, neutered. Um, there's an organization here that manages that. Um, and usually... Usually it's pretty, they're pretty safe, um, but there are instances where they have bit people and stuff. So th thankfully there is ways of dealing with that. There is like rabies meds and stuff in Georgia, but usually not a problem. Um, yeah, no one else. Cool, can I be a skate guide then? <laughs> <laughs> Which region has the best Fatipuri? Ajara! <laughs> yeah, Ajaruli Hachapuri. Look it up. Boat filled with bread and cheese and egg and butter. Um, really delicious. Um, in, terms of, in terms of just rocking up and working as a ski guide in Georgia, it really depends where you are. Um, 
some areas, especially like Svaneti, um, have a very strong mountain guiding culture. And if you, as a foreigner, just rock up there and start <laughs> guiding random people, you won't be very popular um, with the locals. So can't recommend that, but definitely recommend spending some time in Georgia first before deciding um, deciding where and what you want to do um, in terms of guiding other people. Yeah. What else? Any other questions? Um, any other questions? Okay. Well, we're getting close to the hour that I was aiming for, so um, give it another 30 seconds or so. Arena's going to say goodbye. We can all say goodbye. <laughs> oh, we can all say goodbye. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Come to Georgia and ski with us. It's so much fun. Yes. And feel free to message um, Luke with questions if you have any questions about it. Oh, we have one more question. What's our next adventure? Well, ski safaris. <laughs> ski safaris. Ski safaris. We're actually ski going, um, this is somewhat related to skiing, somewhat not, but we're going to go check out a cultural experience um, in a region in between Ajara and the Gudauri region where they make, um, old, they make cheese bread and a, a specific type of really delicious cheese called tanili. Um, in this 300 year old stone hut. So we're gonna, gonna go see how they make it um, and hopefully be taking people there on our ski safari trips this coming winter. So stay tuned. Um, also, I'm headed to uh, the Racha area for the months of February and March. Um, I'm gonna be helping out with a group called Snow Vigil while I'm there. Um, and. Yeah, I, lo I love Racha. Quite a few, of, all of us were there last year and yeah. we, we love the place. Yeah, one of my favorite regions in Georgia. Definitely going to be making it back there this winter. For sure. <laughs> okay, well, thanks everyone. Um, yeah, thank hopefully, you. hopefully thank we'll you see guys. some of you. Yeah, thank you. Bye bye. Nach <laughs> <laughs>